for to, I was going to build up to this before I do it, but I'm sort of going to address it now before it gets out of hand. Uh, Bill, this is a response to someone named Bill J. Uh, this is great. His, his comments are such. Um, and I'm probably not going to record them all. They're pretty damn, damn long. Uh, this is great except for the parts that are wrong. He's talking about me explaining that concrete is strong intention. All right. First, however, first, whoever told you that concrete tension strength is neglated, neglated his spelling, and concrete design is wrong. Okay. Well, you just told me something about yourself right there with that statement, right? Sure, you cannot design a hanger and reinforce concrete. So they're, they're doing straw man now. So if you're going to talk, communicate with me, don't do straw man. Stay focused on my video content I'm presenting. It's staged. Don't be that little kid in the room that says, oh, 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 you're wrong because you know where we're going with it. And that's not the way I do this. I do it in stages, stepping up to where we're going to go. You're, uh, you're doing straw man now. I didn't talk about concrete in a hangar yet. And I will not talk about it in, in, a, in, in, in that capacity besides an FIU bridge collapse where I talked about concrete and the columns being in tension and how they use uh, post-tension bars to reverse that and put them in compression. That's how, that was no, uh, number 11 in the uh, FIU bridge system, which fractured all to hell in a tension failure because of sagging in the deck. All right, not slide failure, as they stated. That would be compressive, and if it was sliding, there were two steel bars in there that it would have to dest would destroy the column as they slid, and yet that's the claim that they're making. Why is that important? Because this is the same thing that's going to happen here. Not the same, but uh, let, me, let me get to this comment first. Uh, so I'm triggered by it because... You've made a couple of comments like this in the past. I've just ignored you, but I'm going to address it a little bit. Vertical shear forces applied to concrete beams or slab become pure tension forces acting at a 45-degree angle. Forces do like 45-degree angles. Over here, we got my man, Dr. Patel, right? And there's your 45 also. That makes it easy for me to triangulate that for you, not just me stating it. Um, okay, second, you already said in your video that concrete is not strong in tension. You said 10 to 1. It's a, it's a rough percentage, 10 to 1. It can change based on what I'm going to get to you at over the many videos we're going to post. And I'm going to show you that that formula is wrong. Um, this depends on the concrete, but average concrete use... I don't know about average concrete, dude. Chill out. The only concrete design that neglects tension capacity of concrete is beam bending. And they're making this, as a matter of fact, the only concrete that negates... This is just... You're off the deep end now. We don't want our buildings limited to one to nine strength ratio, talking about tension here it is. By the time enough load is added to, okay, this is what he states. By the time enough load is added to get the reinforcing working, the concrete is already cracked and is no longer adding any strength. And I'm going to show you that even though you have a crack, your concrete is needed. It's 100% needed to maintain the discipline, to maintain that separation, that crack. Did it already when I showed you the concrete staple videos, and I stepped it up to about maybe five videos. The last one explains it when I put the epoxy in it, and I explained to you why it's so important. I'll get to that in another video. I do it wrap around in a circle again. So I didn't want to post this person's comment because Google held it up, but because it might, it's 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 misleading, but it'll get a, it's wrong, and so I'll get address it here. So this is where I'm. I remember I said I want to turn concrete on its head. So this is because it's, this is the training, all right? Dr. Patel is saying this also, shear failures in a 45 degree angle. Watch how I show you it's not in a 45 degree angle. Now in this, he's showing, uh, it just presents as a 45 degree angle, but it's amazing, right? How I'm gonna simply state this. So again, it presents as a 45 degree angle, but it's a result of, and he's actually stumbled onto it right here. It's a result of multiple fractures and I'll, I'll come back to that image in a second. That's my tip for you. You know, I like giving Colombo tips before I do it. Let's go to this person's video, uh, a, a university, where they talk about the reinforcement, how they're going to use uh, um, sensors in the steel and sensors at the top. There's another video I'm trying to find with the, with the bending steel, and those sensors are very, very awesomely 
awesome for my content. I just lost it. I have to find it. Um, lost it weeks ago. It yeah. is subject to four point loading as shown here. Four point loading. The load One, is applied two, through hydraulic three, cylinder. four. The load cell load measures cell. the load applied. Let's let them narrate. The quantity measures the mid span deflection. There are two strain Both gauges attached errors. to the beam. Strain the gauges. First one is on the concrete surface to measure the compressive. So the first one's on the concrete surface right here. Here's the first defect of the of this, and this is what schools and universities teach, that he's decided that this is where the it will strain will take place the most, that it's here because you just decided that that has the the most deflection in it. Well, I, I would argue that it could be over here or over here, but they're picking here. But more so, it's more it's down here. Because these are not real life. This will not be able to pivot up. So it will change as this force is applied. It will change its reaction locations. There is no beam that's just sitting on the top and this much loads applied to it without having more anchorage to it. It's whether it be lateral bracing or just dead load on top of it, another column, um, or distribute it. This is not typical at all. Strain on the concrete. The second strain gauge is attached to the steel in... So you get second strain gauge is in the steel, not in the concrete below. It's in the steel. So in his, so when we look for the fractures here, where it's not, it would be, it would already, uh, um, the tension in the concrete has already taken place when he finally starts getting reading in the steel. Tension to measure the tensile strain in the steel. So his is about steel. All the data is fed into. All the right. Data. So let's fast forward a little bit. This beam B has a dimension as shown here. Okay, let's go. I'm going to pause it. 18, hey, we're going to do that. 32 and a half, 35 and a half. Sorry, guys. 32, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, All right, so, so there they're loading. There is the 45 that Dr. Patel speaks of, and the one viewer is making a comment on. So here's your 45, all right? But what do, what do you notice? Well, it's not just a 45. There's steel inside here. This matters. I did not say it was steel reinforced yet in my formulation to you. So I'm going to jump the line a little bit, let this guy jump the line and communicate that the steel it just changes the dynamics of concrete. But the, the, what I'm arguing is that tension in concrete, not with steel reinforcement. This is, changes the dynamics of it, all right? It changes the dynamics of the behavior of it. But we still get a this 45 in this case. And let's back it up. I want you to take note of the 45. I'm being I'm being clever right now, guys. I'm, I'm pointing you and I'm robbing a bank, I call it. I'm looking and smiling in your face, but handing a note saying that, you know, it's a stick up. So I'm being clever again. Look at the 45. In reality, I want you also to take note of this. Here's your 45. But what happened here? The forces in the rebar, the reinforcement was so strained they met each other. They met each other in that concrete thickness of 150 millimeters, which is approximately six inches wide. Those forces crossed each other's path. So here's the rebar as we look down from the end, the end of the end of the end of the uh, the end of uh, this guy. When that strain was was bending this this column down, this uh, beam down rather, those forces they came across. They married up. When they were straining down, they also created a, a parallel strain across from each other. Parallel from each other in a plane. And you can see it here as it's revealed. No concrete standing in the middle of it. What the hell? I have, I have no idea how this guy is able to get... Hold on, guys. I have no idea how it's able to get over our video here. Okay, it does not have side shift. That is a correction. Okay, I, don't, I have no idea how that's able to get over our, uh, our content. Let's go back to it again. I paused it this time. Uh, apparently, uh, the app has permission to, to jump, to uh, overlay over top of what we're doing, it's called. So the, um, or, or come to front, it's called. So every time they change a, a position, uh, something for sale, the app gets new, asks for new permission and is granted by this, uh, what I'm using, this, um, um, we're on the same, um, 
not like Google Chrome, but Brave. They obviously have permission from Brave to come to front, overlay top of everything else, the audio, not the video, obviously. So over here, we have the, uh, the forces parallel to each other, and they create this, this break here. So not only is the, te this is a, a, uh, the tension, the, mm, let's say the shear failure, okay? Let's call it the shear failure. But there's a lateral shear here that these this forces these forces parted it beautifully, didn't it? Parted it be beautifully, based on their both being on this um, this how they reacted. And here's your your fulcrum right here. There's your fulcrum. It's not out here. It's not out there. This act is this steel was able to act in a cantilever capacity. So this is where I'm changing the 45 thing. It's not over to here. It acts as a cantilever capacity, able to resist to, to quite some degree. Now, let's go to before it um, it abruptly burst. Now, there's no it abruptly burst, but there's a there's a caveat to that. It's going to be a handoff. In this case, it's uh it's all the forces are equal across the side here, and then I believe the forces are then working from here up to our point here. And this is just the bottom steel over there. No top steel or hangers. Um, or uh, stirrups so we have the uh, and I, that's another video to, to show that content but what's happening here is it the as it's bursting it's handing the, the first crack is at the bottom so then the new dimensions of the steel of the concrete I want you to imagine in, in micro slow motion if you could so here is the first the first let's do this what the hell I'm going to close the tab out I really can't tolerate that. They have permission to write over again, or they just stopped. And I muted it also. So then, and it took me forever to get to that thing, that thing to work. Wait a minute. I should be able to stop the damn thing. Um, let me pull it over here for a second. I think it's at the top. Yeah. That should take care of the overlay, I think. All right, let's go back to um, right here. So we're going to put him in the background, Dr. Patel here. So what happens is if the forces, he's got it going this way, but the burst also happened here in real life. See it here? And then look at his, his break without reinforcement. It has it this way. We, that, that's true too. But it's not just meeting from here and then going up there. It wanted to fracture over here, but some of this strength is acting like a cantilever capacity. It's able to, to support it and transfer its strongest load based on the load that's being applied to it to wherever it resolves, wherever the crack shows. So it, be, it can be different for each building, each loading each loading um, dynamics. So that in one image, it can be here. In another one, it can be a little closer and even further out. This is a drawing, so it's not, it's, it's kind of true in his brain. He knows to not put it out to here, right, to the, the point, uh, point loading, because it doesn't do that. Um, I haven't found it doing that at all. You'd have to be very close, I think, and maybe I, that's a weird one. And it would have to be breaking on one side only to, to show that. Let's do this. Let's go back here. So here's your fracture. I'm going to grab this fracture. And there's that rebar there. There's the top of the fracture. Now what's left, now what's left is this. Oops. Yeah, it's very hard to do. I'm going to do this. Ooh, yeah. I'm trying to grab it. So now what's left is this part above this section above all of this and so when it's still being loaded now it says okay let's it's loading down its forces are still on it applied this way but this time it shifts it over just a little bit and it says okay now it's left and this all happens in a split moment it says now it's left is that and then it that load then gets keep getting applied it moves over again now this left is that you see where this is going it, it moves over before it finally is able to finish itself and deleting finish itself at the very at where you well the way you see it it gets so far up and then it just burst of it burst the rest off down here is a, is your beginning when you see this fracture that's your your focal you son of a take care take care of that so um, yeah they they got some hell of override permissions because I. I stopped it. All right, so back to here, so save. 
Back to here, what's really going on is that it's handing off. Remember I say it's handing off? It's handing off its fracture. And each time it's a little bit, the, the cross section is reduced. And it hands it off closer to where the loading is. And that's why it's working its way back. It's not all in one as it, as it presents as here. Oh, look, it's just a single. No, there, there's other dynamics going on here. You see the fracture all the way down that rebar? That was in a huge amount of tension that was taking place there before it burst apart. And then this over here is the transfer. Now, I have another video. This isn't it. Where it's actually slowed down. Or maybe it's this one. Let's see. There's a scale. Um, let's see if he does the... Let me see. Let's go here. Yeah. All right. So then let's go back. Because I think he slows this one down. Then I slow down his slow down. Okay, so let's do that. Let's go back. And then it releases. And it's kind of random which side. And it's not really random. It's based on the configuration of stone and paste. Because that's where you're getting your strength from. The rebar is consistent. Okay. So there's your your reaction. You're bursting. And this is acting as the... as You can see the forces are greater here. And they're working their way back. How do we know that? Look at the triangle. Look at the V-shape. The forces aren't as great out there, and it's closing up here. It will still eject it a little bit, but the forces are here, and it's two directions, here and here, trying to transfer over to here to the side. Okay, and then it's finished off. There's the rest of the fulcrum bending with the steel there, and just burst the cover off, and the rebar is pretty flat uh, besides the bend right there. Showing that the forces are just so great in that steel. The bond strength was trying to hold on. And all that built up energy. Once it exceeded the ability of this, it failed in what? A brittle fracture. A brittle fracture, as you can see, the bursting of it. There's, it's, you know, it's brittle. It's real fast. It's abrupt. And this same in this direction, too. And I'm going to load up. Th this has a lot more story behind it. But I wanted to give the quick... So you know where we're going with it. But it, it will have supporting data behind it. You just have to bear with me. And there's their uh, deflect the uh, rebar energy. It looks like it might have a moment, moment down. Or maybe that pushing up in the air push fractured it right here. As this pushed down, it created a, a fulcrum there maybe. All right. So yeah, this pushed down because it's tight here and opening here. So... It, when it pushed down, actually the tension was at the top. It broke it free from the rebar and then pivoted it because we have a gap here. These gaps matter. They tell the story of and how they configure it. They tell the story of what's going on. So again, I want you to think of it that way. It hands it off all the way up. Let's see if we get lucky. And do they give me any... Thing down below they do not what's this junk gosh I just don't really I don't give a care who's talking this stuff comedy whatever sorry let me just get rid of a couple of this ah looks like I'm stuck with singers if I get that um resisting bending okay think up we'll pass on that I want to see the the, let's see, look and find if we can find one more um, video. I don't think the stirrups are right. Let's see, that's Tyler. Um, okay. Even though you see the red, doesn't mean I've watched it all the way through. Oh, this might be it here. Let's go with this one. 137 in slow mo, material, slab, material labs online. Let's go with uh, narration of it. And there's your load cells, each one. Oh, configuration of the steel. Two bars down low, 63 by 130 millimeters. Um, stirrups applied. And low points, rollers. Fixed one roller the other end. All right. So now this reaction doesn't happen. It looks like reinforcement going all the way through, like post-tension bars going through. 
All right, so they're parallel. The forces are parallel here on the gauging. Here's the strain gauge there showing the amount of deflection between these two right here. Pressure going up, deflection going up. And, but the problem is right here, this doesn't happen. It doesn't, it does, let me back that up, I'm trying to back it up. This doesn't happen, you don't get to roll that edge up. Let's go back. Let's go back again. Okay, roll it, roll it, roll the tape. It's playing. All right, so there it is flat on this one. Let's watch this one. And it's a roller. It's going to break on the other end, but let's watch this end. So that's rotating up. And it even shift, but we already got our failure. There's our bursting I talked about. There's the rebar reinforcement. It looks like it had two moments to, uh, to fracture, I would guess. Out here first. And then the loads kept applying, and this was the secondary burst along that strain energy of the uh, on the concrete and the bonding edge energy of this. Um, yeah, and then that created that moment there. This is part of my. Let's go back. Part of my. Okay, there it goes off. So a little bit of torque action this way. So doing that energy, I would say the left failed first, and the right failed with more explosive energy, the right furthest away to give us that torque towards us. Oh, wait a minute. That's a bounce. No. Yeah, it goes up in the air. It started rotating already. So it's already torquing towards us. The top of it here. So it tells you how the concrete even behaved in this one. Okay, there we go. So there's our there's our closed end down here. There's our fracture. Again, photography-wise, this is showing the frame, the, uh, the center... Uh, can help us tell you the speed of it by the what's least what's more in focused so this is obviously moving at a higher frequency than down here that's why the f sensor can pick it up this one has got too many frames per second to process for us so the more blurred it is the more speed it's captured at that time the, uh, or um, the coloring is a problem so if you put some bullseye on bullseyes on here that would have really helped with the sensor and there's a burst our secondary burst into the air also. And there's the fracture going down. And now this energy from here to here is, or me, is meeting, uh, but it has a path, a weak path, and that's that fracture that's already developed here. And it steps over. See how it goes there? And then just steps over. That's why you see these cracks like this. And you're like, I don't know how it moved over. Because it, it, it's a new load path. So this is let this what's re remaining before this fracture here develops. What's remaining is this section here. What is contrary to it is the forces going down here, resisting by the reinforcement here, including the energy of it being able to hold internally. And it then says, okay, with that force, let's go, let's go find it. And so it starts moving towards it, and then again and again and again, you know, thousands of times or whatever you want to think of it as, as it works its way to a final point where it just um, just finishes the fracture meeting each other like the two dip, like the rebar that meets down at the bottom parallel to each other see the roller move see, so that's not true you don't have a uh, it would be pinned at the top here it would be restrained at the top if this was in, uh, you know typical beam a beam it's holding something above or it's a portal area but then you wouldn't have this load to cause that reaction. So to have this, it's, it's going to have something that's restraining it also. So that's going to change how it behaves in failure here. This failure wouldn't look like this in real life. It wouldn't look like that because you, you can't get the uplift. You would have a restraint here. And so the failure would look, would, would look present differently. And I'll get to that. And I'll give you a tip for, for my people like tracking down stuff. Bridges in the night, exchanging loads. Bridges in the night, doo -doo -doo. exchanging glances. So there's your hint. I guess I'll give you a little stronger one than that. Load testing. Load testing bridges. There's your hint. 
All right. Um, so that's the one we just went through on that one. And I'll go back one. Yeah, I said I would end it. Let's, that was that one. Oh. I think I like this one too. This I'm looking for the one that's slow mo. Slow motion. And then I can slow it down even more. So there's their point loading. Looks like a triangle point load. You know, like really like amazing amount of point loading that would never happen. There we go. There we go. There's our, there's my fracture developing right here. Let's back that up. Do, 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 do. Well, let's let it play first so you can see it. See it developing? And the con and it's working over. Remember, it's handing off, handing off, handing off as it does it. And, re and your version of it, it looks like a abrupt, fast failure. But it's not. It's handing off. They're loading this very slowly in this concrete reinforcement. This might have stirrups in it. Is able to hold it together longer to give us that evaluation. Now here it is here. So whichever one beats to the top has the beats it to the top is the one that ferals. And there's our parallel. And this will look like the H beam on uh, the failure. On oh, uh, Champlain. CTS. And there's our there's our development fracture going down our re reinforcement this direction. I would I would uh, pretty much assume. Um, looking at both sides, it's pretty parallel. It's a pretty stubby little beam. This is flat here. It might be lifting up right about there. Remember that would have been confined, and it would, so it would have present more closely to this plane. Okay. There we go. So there's your. Now it's at the bottom. So this is probably got stirrups. I uh, don't don't want to look at it. See the answer. Still loading, they met each other. Stretchy, stretchy. Rebar is doing a lot of work. Um, yeah, I'm going to guess stirrups are in here, and part of the top rebar is even doing work at this point. Let's see if we can cut to the chase. Hmm. Nope. All right, so back here. Do, 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 do. There we go. Backing up. Backing up, back it up, back it up, back it up. Looking at the fracture here. Okay. So it looks like no fracture. We're looking. And right about there, it looks like it's developed. Doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo -doo, there it goes. And that would be this direction. So there we have our forces going up. Just handing off. Let's see if you can observe the handoff. See it's nothing there. And so the fracture starts down here. More loading is applied. It's a new dynamics to it. And there's a force multiplier going on here. So here's the force multiplier part that I want you to understand with this fracture. Okay, so let's draw in the fracture first. So here's the steel. Let's just put it in there like that. All right, so there's your steel. And then let's put in different color. We'll put in uh, green. And then we'll put in the, uh, my next piece. That'll be the fracture, and we'll do that in yellow. All right, so there, there's there. This is what's left now. What's left is this. This is the new beam-ish. Hold on. On this side of that, of this side, as this tries to uh, bend down, there's a much larger compression over here. As these, as the fulcrum is created right here above the crack. Not below it. The steel is trying to transfer it and share it behind it, like a reach around, if you will. Share it behind it, uh, like a strong in a strong back capacity. But as it stretches, um, the fulcrum being here, it's more compression going right here in this zone. And then that compression, with, along with this loading, starts marrying, you know, shifting. Uh, wait a minute. Starts. Yeah, great. 
start shifting and meeting each other because the two forces are meeting. Doop, 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 and it steps up. All right, let's make that smaller. Okay, so it's starting, well, in this case, the crack's down here. So the zone is, in this case, from here to here, but I would visualize the, the uh, so, okay. So here's the crack. The, the compression, let's move this over, is right about there. This side of the concrete, allow me a little liberty on my shapes. If you think of this, this is the fulcrum now, right here, and the steel at the bottom is that staple video I showed you. And I showed you also in that video that if you don't close this up, well, this can this clearly can butterfly, right? It can clearly butterfly. Exaggeration, of course, but it can clearly it can clearly butterfly because of the big gap between it. This big gap, that gap doesn't exist because that and that gap doesn't exist. The forces are still trying to push each other here on each other at that point there, creating a lot of compression here. And a lot of compression also helps with the fracturing. But as the fracturing is happening, it's shifting over. Nah. So it's there, but I don't, it's not all the way up to the top. It's meeting It's meeting this other weird force that's over here. The other weird one, which is this one up here, this triangle force here is what I'm dri driving at, which is crazy point loading. And so then it shifts. And then as it, a new, a new uh, moment is created based on the steel and paste and how the steel is reacting and how it's further away from, it's, uh, it's further away from its original crack. So now the more compression is working up top. <sighs> more compression of the, more compression. And so it shifts over and then it shifts over. Imagine the opposite side of this again. And why that cracks matter uh, up the top there, why you want to fill them in with epoxy. So it may, if you get, do get, see cracks up there, it's also telling you you have spalling, also telling you have a reaction going on. If you get spalling up here, it's telling you you're getting deflection to cause this, this uh, spalling up here. If you had rebar up there, it would spall. Uh, concrete, it, would, it might be a very light, small spall. Small, forget it. I'm owning it now. Very light, small spall. Um, flaking and that's just explaining that, oh we're getting some some internal fractures going pressure in here internal pressure in here causing the concrete to flake off so it's moving over but remember as this cracks moves up and over this steel is going to be reacting behaving differently because it's open down here it's steel this now becomes the tent uh, just grip force if you will on this side of the rebar and this side also with the fulcrum here where the fracture is, where it's opening, and a compressive moment at the top of, of, uh, of this, at the top part of the steel, trying to keep it from buckling in. Okay, hopefully I didn't confuse you. Probably did. I probably jumped to the video, this video content too soon, and maybe should have stacked it a lot more, stacked the data up a lot more before we got here. But let's just show you where you're going, and let's get you there.